Peter is my colleague from Sweden. He is doing to uh, present you our micro segmentation services, uh, how we connect with uh, with firewalls, and uh, he's going in depth so, uh, from uh, that particular point. So uh, give him uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes max. I will. I will do my best. Okay. If I go further, I will not have a Okay. Or less friends. All right. The other way around. Yes. Yeah. Um, so obviously I'm here out of Swedish. Uh, uh, for that. So, uh, SPN. Uh, I have done a couple of those SDN meetups, and uh, the concept of what is SPN seems to be a little bit bluish. And um, this is this is a Swedish way of SDN, right? Um, yeah, that's a good start, isn't it? Uh, this is my only slide about Arista. I mean, you are here, you're getting food and drinks, and Robin's here, and all kinds of Arista folks. So, uh, this is Arista. Uh, if you like software, it's fine if you make your money on selling hardware. I will not show you any switch or LED or Ethernet port or whatever today. So, we're all about software, actually, you know, SDN. Uh, Fertenhallen, please, maybe, I don't know. Uh, probably this since 2010, could be, I was not clear then. Um, what is the fact is that Arista started the whole idea as a software. He started the whole idea to put as a soft, a better software despite how hardware it is. But that was way, way, way too early in adoption circle of customers. That's why we are now a switch company with pretty decent software. All right, let's go into uh, what we are. Um, we don't, we don't burn silicon. We don't freeze software. Silicon is, is pretty easy, right? You, 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 you define something, put it in the hardware, freeze it in state, and hope it works. That is how it's building with silicon. I have never, I know, don't, I don't know anything about it. I've done software all my life. By the way, this is my, I'm a system engineer now since two years back. In Uniper, I code BGP. And, and Cisco, I can't even remember what I was doing, but I, so if my lack of you know, in Thailand, you just have to, you know, you are here, right? So it's all your fault. Uh, we focus on, on data set switching. That's what we do. We don't do any wireless. We don't do any, any other spooky stuff. You know, whatever that needs to be burned in a data center, that's what we are. Um, but, but, but what I like with this session is this is one of few things that actually talk about how you can build a standardized way in the echo center to work with other vendors. When I was in Cisco, you know, working with other vendors was a freaking joke, right? There was something that you're hammering down when they adapt. That's not really ecosystem, right? In Uniper, they usually write a paper with someone, and then now no, we are ecosystem partner. Well, you will find out we do doing stuff with other leading other technologies. In this case, it will be a bunch of firewalls. Uh, so this is why I like this presentation. I am not that super security guy. Is there any hardcore security guy in here? I, I usually say that just to put the pressure. So now, <laughs> right? I, I, you know, either it's that you confront the human stand close to someone, then you don't get naughty questions. That, that's at least that works in Sweden. It's in Nordic, by the way, what's the biggest fear? That the Russians got to nuke us? Not really. That they're going to beat us in hockey? Well, they never do. <laughs> uh, it is, you go into a bus and you don't get a seat, or you have to sit close to someone. That's, that's the biggest fear, right? Then people in speed or something, ah, I'm going to take another bus, I can wait there for three, four hours, no problem, just buy this little phone. Ah, EOS, we are, has anyone, you know, we have a bunch of system engineers, well, where's Michael, he's hiding somewhere, right? Oh, he's in the corner. So I guess Michael and boys have talked about DS, and I'm not going to elaborate that much about it, other than it's one thing crystal clear that you know we need to anchor before you know we even go further in the session is that we separate where we have the data and where we calculate the data. That means that we call everything, every process in US is an agent, but it's a process. So if you have a routing process, rib D, it calculates on rib and fit, but the stored entry is what we call CSDB. So, you know, could be say as a database, it's essentially just a library, right? It's a pointer where you put information. Why is that super cool? 
Because if there was someone else that needed that information, you don't need to ask to read the daemon, right? You just grab it from system B. So if you learn a route from an internet interface, which is on next stop, if that falls flat down, then that route will automatically vanish from system B because you can't resolve. That is how you store information. This is not super, super new stuff. Database boys, they've been doing this for 30 years or so. So it's just that we were a little bit later when we did the software. I guess I'm a little bit beating up because we have a VP of system engineer somewhere there is crying probably, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't show yet. Next evolution in our model here is that we also collect information. Like we had this session earlier, we collect a lot of information. Information can be logs, it can be stats, it can be state that we also collect in the system B in real time, as much as you want, you know, the heat from the friggin' switch since last year that we can put into this machine. And the last piece is we're gonna make a lot more software around it. Uh, open config, uh, pro proto buff, which is kind of Google streaming protocol, pretty cool. Uh, we have Docker, so forget about KVM and stuff like that. So we're adding software and software and software. So this is probably the most SDN alike in this presentation I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna focus more on what we can do. So we have all this information in a sort of smart way in our switch. Let me come up with a cool idea. So why not just central store it? SysDB can be socket mounted, which means that you collect everything to a VM from every switch. It's not that you collect and hammer everything in your bucket, it means that this guy here, he has the puzzle of everything, because he has the read from everything in the device that has a socket mount. That is SDN. That is much as SDN as it is, but you know, we really, really come up with a cool name and call it SDN. The nice thing is that as long as you have a focal point of information, forget about that the switch has a rib and a fever and all that stuff. It is that controllers of all kinds can interact with this piece of information. So what do we add that could be cool for this firewall guru in, in, the, in the hall there? Well, we can tell him exactly where devices are based on MAC addresses, IP addresses, and so forth. So what he calls zones there is a particular bunch of objects that, that he separates in a subnet or something else. So now you have a recipe for a firewall policy can actually interact with network. And I will come to where is that, you know, where is that a cool thing. So how does our security look like in the data center so far? Well, uh, it's been on a design that's no longer existing. That means that all traffic coming from north, going down south, you have a response going up again, right? The legacy data center model that is long gone. Because these days, most of the traffic is between a VM and a VM, or a VM and a storage. Now we look at self right? So let's say that I'm Googling, or I'm going to buy something on Amazon, I'm going to buy some, no, we have Netherlands, right? So some pink, pink underwear or something like that, some nasty. Orange. Those underwear are not really on that server, right? Your requests come into a front end, and there's a bunch of packets going east and west where you have reviews of those pink, uh, well, uh, maybe not reviews, a little nasty, but you know, all the, all the pictures of those underwear, right? And uh, the price point, and maybe you can lower it a little, like pink shirts and pink trousers and pink whatever. These are examples of traffic with a small piece going north, south, and then a bunch of things east and west. How do you separate that in a security fashion? So this is what I'm going to talk about. So, micro-segmentation. How many have heard about micro-segmentation? Essentially VM to VM, right? You, you have this nice verb, tenant, tenant which is an object, which is these, which essentially can be a zone, right? Zone of VMs. VM talk to a VM, right? So that's an isolated little part of your uh, data center. 
Next word is macro segmentation, which is total opposite, right? That is when a tenant, when I talk to a tenant, and in the, in the five rule words, this is when a soul is going to interact with another soul. The inner soul with the DMC, of the soul, or whatever word you can. What we would like to say is a macro segmentation, which is not the TCP word here, that is how we are going to implement to see that those two can marry to each other. So what is micro segmentation? Do we have any VMware jockey in here? Man. Did I scare the firewall guys? No, you can't really say that you're aware or savvy. <laughs> All right. So uh, in real world, the practices, if, if you go with NSA stack, but this is the name of the game for them, right? You have a firewall capability so that hypervisor is controlled when they talk to each other. Because elsewhere, there's no security policy, right? So that is their claim to fame. The problem with, with this is obviously not everything can be tunneled nicely between the VM and the VM. It needs to be, there has to be somewhat of a bare metal somewhere. Uh, storage is one of the biggest examples of it. It's pretty hard to virtualize storage. You can do with Visa and stuff, but you need to put the, the information somewhere, right? So it's pretty hard to virtualize that. Compute nodes you virtualize because you want to piper up your utilization, you use the shape of your server. So storage is storage, then you put a lot of data. So there is somewhere where this micro segmentation has a challenge in order to incorporate a security policy. So that is what we try to, to accomplish here. We don't try to be affect somewhere in this path here, because this is micro segmentation, right? What we look at here is a com compute node in a VM who's going to be able to interact with this. This is the most critical, this is the most important thing you have in your data center. This is the data, right? Here you do all the processing. But if someone's going to do a harmful thing that you get a hard to recover, it's where you have the real data, right? This is the stuff that you need to protect. So now we need to come up with a small thing here, how to apply somewhat of a virtual appliance rule to this thing here that doesn't know anything about virtualization. So what, what we're doing is that we try to copy to add where the physical topology can merge with the virtual topology in that sense that we control the forwarding. How do we do that? Well, to begin with, we need to find out the policy, the security policy. So what we have here is a panorama from Palo Alto. We need to do this trick with many more of them, but you know this is this is the slide I have, so let's let's be panorama fan. Um, <clears throat> here we have the fiber rule set. And what this is in, in our meaning, there is a bunch of objects that talk to each other, right? It's a yes and a no rule. So, an easy thing for us, since we know the MAC address and IP addresses in the network, is like I'm going to zone talk to a zone, right? Because that's a subnet interact with another subnet. So that would be easy to tag with something that that one we need to take care of. A more difficult one would be like every HTTP, right? But that's not really zone to a zone. So what we're going to look at is not every single piece of network. We're going to see to that where the micro segmentation has a pitfall. Where someone's going to interact with that object, which is the storage. So by tagging in the uh, policymaker panorama, then by having a restful IPI session between our cloud vision, you know, the guy that had all this piece of information, with the panorama software, we can figure out what policies that needs to be attended. And we're not really doing a security policy yet. What we do is that he tells us this, when his, this guy's going to talk to him, well, then you need to put them together through a firewall. That is what we're thinking. So we're not going to try to do a smart thing with an Apple's a stateless access list and a switch when you're supposed to act in a stateful manner. What we're going to do is we're going to push the traffic to the firewall. We just assume that you have designed your network in a leaf and spine where connection up is maybe 500 nanoseconds, connection to that leaf is another 500 nanoseconds, right? So you have built a network where you can do these cross paths with a good delay, which means no delay. 
Michael there, he can tell you all about how you leave the spine that we can build. And uh, for sure, Rob can tell you that. Shark. <laughs> and Shark, well, he's a good guy here, so. Yeah, I'm so bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's see how we do this. So, in a network, we are a switch. Some, when something plugs in here, we know definitely every mechanism in the whole network. We know the alpha thing. If we also are the default router, we get all the ARPs. This is now ECP. Because now suddenly we have merge MAC address with IP. We know exactly both on A3 and A2 where all of those guys are on the physical level in the network. Care less about the VLANs because we know all VLANs here. We also know that where potentially all those firewalls are because they have the good choice of, of exploring themselves with LLDP. They say, hey, I am firewall, I am here. Good. Then this switch here knows that puts in its system B database and system B is Cloud Vision Bank. Then we have that information. Next thing is that we have this session to the firewall controller. And so in this case, I'm talking about Panorama, which means that we take the policies with those tags and imprint that to the objects list. That means that we, we will then know when this object, MACLS or IP address, is going to interact with that IP address. So then there's no firewall here, right? We look at the communication between those devices. So, since we have a VXLAN based network here, this one, what we do is that we map it to a virtual extra bridging instance. We have something called direct flow, which is sort of like open flow without the dumbness of a controller. The policy route into that extra bridge zone and thereby forcing, which actually, if my route terms here, we change in next stop. That means that if the packet comes in here, and this guy here, we see the object, oh, this buddy here, he's going to talk to that buddy there. Force him into that bitch instance, and shuffle him to what? To the firewall. To the stateful firewall. That they're going to do the, the security decision if these two guys are allowed to talk to each other. So we don't do it. We don't install an access list or anything else. We just do it in a smart way in ASIC with no delay whatsoever, pushing it into a bridge instance and pushing the traffic to the firewall that will take the decision if these guys are allowed to talk to each other. If they are allowed to talk to each other, well, <clears throat> then that packet will be then, through this virtual bridge instance, sent to the destination. And the response from the destination will be just a copycat of what we, what we trigger of this session will be. Because we will not do any smart here and send that packet directly to the source because what would, no firewall will love an inconsistent state, right? You need to see packet in this direction with the sin flags and whatever and the act flags in that direction. So the only thing we have done here is that we have manipulated the forwarding table, which is an easy piece, but you know all, you have all the films already, we say that instead of having this, low, this normal pitching domain, put into this pitching domain. So should you do this for every time the traffic in your network? No. What, what we're looking at is those exceptions where the virtualized world needs to talk to the bare metal. This complicated stuff that what else it would need, that example that you point to something would be that the firewall would be the default route for a network. I don't see a firewall could be a default route for a network, but it, what is firewall do that? To put the stuff into a stateful inspection, reach the whole packet and then forward for every type of traffic. A switch looks at the destination and then they take a decision into a forwarding table and that is easy piece. So, we don't install an access list. 
There's no, we don't do any security decision whatsoever. We do it for those guys that can do it, the firewall. The firewall do it better seven days a week. And the glory with this is that you can move stuff around as you want. Because the forwarding table is the same in all switches, right? Depending on if that object, that market as the iPad has resides on you. That means that you can move, the, the, which is kind of the name of the game with a VM, is that you have an underpopulated server in another leaf, you move those VM, those compute to that compute nodes, thereby you move in the policies. That's the game. Then you can have a dynamic world of moving your resources. That is SDM. You don't build a static environment. So, summary. We don't really do any extra stuff here. We're using VXLAN. VXLAN for me is a standard. I know there's a, there's a draft, but it is a standard. It's just a UDP packet where you cap, where you map a VLAN to a VNI. That's a forwarding, right? So if anyone switch else here in the path, no weeks long, go ahead, you can join. We don't do any property tags like others, like the more clustering based stuff that say ingress here, outside here, and map that as a policy. The only thing we do is that we're doing a policy forwarding decision of what we learn in a network which is based on the L2 female L3 thing. We don't do anything else. And these are ASIC stuff, right? So we don't point up in CPU, shuffle a packet to a somewhat a CPU and then do it. What we do is that we change the next stop in the ASIC. Right. Then I suppose to show some. Google stuff here at or motion picture. Since the other do before me did it, then I have to do it also. So we have a firewall, we have storage. <clears throat> you have your rule set in um, Panorama. Now you need to configure the session to the Panorama. Hopefully you type in route. The MN is out of completion, but you know it could be difficult. This is all the real CLI interaction here. You start the group, uh, you have a host name here, this the panorama, that's the IP address to the panorama agent. You have a you don't need to have a read and write user, you have a read user so you can get it. And here's the cool thing, right? Here's the tag. This is the one that he needs to send to me. So this is where Panorama and F5 and others, the only thing they need to do is help us tag this policy. We don't want to have the whole policy, right? We want to have those ones that make sense. And they can't be, they can't be on, on some extraordinary fashion, right? There needs to be some zone related. And then we create a dynamic rule based on that. A dynamic rule that can be seen, but it's not, we're not installing an extra thing in the CLI. So any new topic to that group would just be an extra entry that would manipulate the forwarding table. Is it amazing to see how it's scrolling back and forward, right? So you see the colors. I, I'm, I'm not really a coring guy, but that's what it is. Right. Any questions? Also support other so those support that, that, that we have to my knowledge here, and uh, again there, there are uh, this uh, B plus system engineering back forward here, so he's, um, he's in a difficult spot here, right? Um, um, Palo Alto, F5, Fortinet, Checkpoint, man, there's an extra list employee down there, right? And in the in the F5 cases, is that why would you interact with a low balancer? A low balancer uses the concept of VIP, right? VIP is that you send something to. But when a VIP change, it doesn't change, it needs to change the MAC address. Then this solution is glorified, right? Because he knows, oh, this, this IP now has this MAC. So there's no time addition. So we don't 
say this is the perfect solution. It is, per, it is to be with aim because you know we live in the data center to bridge the problematic view when you have a highly virtualized environment with some bare metal. That's what we focus at. But this solution could be applied also if you don't have any virtualization, of course. So first, in the VX lab, what is one of the, in my region, one of the best uh, missions for VX lab based network is not really to interact with VMware. That is that you have an old stinky cluster based network, you build your new shiny leaf and spine, so now you're going to merge that. What is the thing you don't want to merge? You don't want to change the IP addresses of your service, right? And you don't need, because you shuffle it in, and then you let the explore to create your bridging domains. So in the Nordic area, this, this is where I sell the XLAR networks. That is when I build new stuff, because to begin with, you can build a new fancy network, but you don't need to waste time and do reset netting the whole network. All right, any other question? The name of the Swedish king should. I go to many of these uh, orchestration uh, meetups and yeah. presentations, and there uh, VXLAN is sort of uh, old news. And uh, they, especially Google, is talking more about level three routing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said you said you're, and, and no VXLAN is I use anymore. Are they saying that? Well, I mean, if if you have so so. Let me put one thing straight is that to begin with, why do you hire someone that has hacked BGP for five years in Juniper? I was pretty, pretty. Why do you hire me, right? We only build IP based networks. Good looking? <laughs> Sorry. You never believed it. You have not believed it. You're going to end this now here, right? This is what most people remember. You needed a Peter. So, so the, what, what are we using these labs? So, if, for instance, one of my biggest customers is Spotify. What is Spotify is doing? Streaming. So the same thing, the same frigging billion idle tunes is on every server, checking from storage. It's careless. They run. They have BGP all the way down to the server. Exactly. Yes. Let's say now that you have a, a network where you provision VMs with an application. Provision. VMs, virtual virtual machines. Yeah, legacy. Legacy stuff. Legacy stuff. Yeah. That needs to be in the same subnet. Yeah. Then you need the XLAN. Yeah. Yeah. So even if you say the XLAN routing or the XLAN bridging, because we do the XLAN routing better than anyone else, we do routing and then we can the XLAN bridge. The XLAN is bridging. So if your network can handle subnet crossing, you don't need the XLAN. Actually, you wouldn't need this solution either. You just need to push the traffic, right? But VXLAN is a nice way to building bridging domains yeah. and also doing policy forwarding. Doing that little extra stuff. You remember when MPLS come, traffic engineer only what you have to, and then everyone turns out everything? That was cool. See what I'm saying here, right? VXLAN is us extra stuff to manipulate so you can move your subnet around. It's not really for, for, for that in our design, right? VMware uh, is doing each one of the different things. That is that they can apply policies, like policy chaining. That is why they tunnel it. They wouldn't tunnel it elsewhere. That's where they can do continuous <coughs> bridging around. True. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.